Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing to you Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 for the Nintendo Switch. Or so they say, but there's no such thing as the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. At first glance, this seems like yet another Mario and Sonic crossover that has a bunch of mini games based on whatever Olympic Games was happening the year after it came out. Which is so ironic in hindsight, the fact that they didn't realize that we'd be doing a real-life Virtue's Last Reward imitation and having an actual pandemic. And so a lot of the stuff that they were predicting didn't happen. Yeah, maybe Sega can learn from this and actually make their games based on the year that they came out instead of being all futuristic like most sports titles. Well, Sega must not have listened to my original review because today I'm going to be reviewing to you Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 for the Nintendo Switch, which came out in 2021 outside of Japan. It was based on the Olympics of the previous year, but those Olympics never happened because of COVID-19. So this is a really cool quantum physics experiment to talk about something that never happened and portray it in a game. Well, I guess that's video games in general. I mean, it's not like Ganondorf actually took over Hyrule in real life as much as people would like to think otherwise from all the tearful reunions. <laughs> At the end of the day, this is yet another minigame collection. And even though you can play as Sonic, thanks to the 30th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog update, apart from that, this is more trying to simulate how the events actually are, as opposed to cartoony arcadey action, you're trying to simulate the energy and the effort that the athletes would have put into the moves. When you're doing swimming, for example, you actually feel like you're getting tired from stroking too fast. And when you're biking, you have to be very careful of the timing and your stamina gauge. The mini games are varied in quality and it would take me too long to list all of them, but I'm really happy that there's a lot of customization for your characters and your teammates. The character creator is possibly the most robust I've ever seen in a game, although that's not saying much, because apparently the games that I haven't played have even better customization than this. But I would like to think that this is the most perfect I've ever gotten my hair in any character creation tool, so take a hint, me maker. And I really hope that you guys appreciate how I tried really hard to customize my outfit to make it look as close to what my actual self would wear if I was a contestant in the Olympic Games. However, that's about the extent of what you unlock in this game. You get all the mini games from the start, and even though you win points for doing good in the games, all the points do is unlock additional outfits. Now, thankfully, you can mix and match the outfits between the gender, as every single outfit has a variety that both genders can wear, even if some of them are a bit weird. Like, for example, if you get the two-piece bikini for the girl, it turns into a speedo for the man, which is slightly awkward, depending on your preference. But it's better than being too inclusive, like, say, Animal Crossing Wild World was, where the females would always wear a dress and the males would always wear shorts and you really didn't have any variety. Hey, with that, the females can even have full bushy mustaches if they really want to, which is always a nice touch for me because I like some scenic variety every now and then. So it would take too long if I went into every single mini game, but most of them range between decent and kind of sort of confusing. There's not really a bad minigame, there's some where I just could not get the controls to work. However, the biggest problem with this game is the fact that there's not really a good single player mode offline. You see, most of the game is intended for you to make your company, or your country, the dominant country. If you're in America like me, you'll want America to succeed and be better than every single other country in the world. However, I am not like that. I like to play these games more casually. Who cares if Brazil is better than America? I mean, if they're good, then they're good. Might as well let them celebrate their victory. Do I have to say that my country is better, even if I personally would probably lose within two seconds at this, but therefore America as a category? I, I don't get sports. I'm not going to try to figure out the logic behind this, but... Suffice to say that I found this to be a fun minigame collection for a couple of hours, but no more than that. Now, if you go online, you could potentially have hours worth of enjoyment if you're the super competitive type. But I did not test the online because I thought this would be more like Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, where it had a story mode and it had dream events. This doesn't really have either of those. You're really only practicing. 
Which leads into one of my biggest problems, is that character customization takes way too long. As opposed to being able to edit your avatar's outfits right before you start an event, you have to select change your outfit, then select the event you want to change the outfit for, then manually choose each outfit for the different characters. Now you can copy and paste the outfits, but this is also a bit tedious. Like, why couldn't you just do this right before you started the event? That would have made this much less time consuming or have an option and just have the same outfit for everything, which I ended up doing. I had my original avatar wear something the same in every outfit except biking. And it was kind of hilarious to see everyone else and <laughs> everyone else in basketball jerseys and I chose to play as a girl the first time and she was wearing a one piece and I just thought it was kind of hilarious that the game doesn't really take itself too seriously as far as the realism department except in the controls. Now most of the time the controls are one or two buttons. You might have to hold down L and R at the same time in some cases, but most of the time the controls are kept really simple. One really bizarre exception is table tennis, which requires you to tilt the control stick as though you're actually swinging a racket. And it kind of feels like they thought too hard about like, ooh, table tennis on Wii Sports Resort was pretty cool. Let's try to do that. But without actually giving you an option, to swing with the Joy-Cons. To my knowledge, there's not a single sport that uses motion controls, which is great, but if you're gonna pop in weird button controls, why not at least make them make sense, like Skyward Sword did, where you swing your sword based on the direction of the stick. In this, it just, I don't know, it feels off. But that was probably the worst minigame. All of the others are pretty darn decent. Unfortunately, there's not really a whole lot more I can say about Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 because the practice mode is really all I could do. While some of the unlockable outfits are kind of hilarious, and it's really cool that you get the Sonic outfit for free to celebrate Sonic's 30th anniversary, this doesn't have nearly as much personality as the Mario and Sonic variety, and it doesn't have the story mode or the unique characters, and some people might be okay with that, others aren't. So I think this game is worth a rental. You should definitely give it a try, like see if you like it or not, maybe you'll like it more, but you probably don't want to buy this at full price. You might not want to buy it at all, you might just want to take a quick look so with that, thank you very much for watching. Let me know if I missed anything in the comment section. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and let's hope the next Olympic Games game will be based on Olympics that actually did happen. Bye!